What's up everybody? In this video, you're going to learn how to create a weight tracker in Excel all the way from scratch. Once you're finished, you'll be able to set a specific goal and then track your weight daily over the course of an entire year. And what's really awesome is that you can see the daily change in your weight, how much is left to reach your goal, and you can even view your overall monthly progress in this nifty dynamic line chart. Okie dokie, if this looks like something that you want to build, then let's get to it. Starting with a blank Excel workbook, click here to select all cells. Right click on the column headers, column width, set the width to 14, click OK. Right click on the row headers, row height, set the height to 20, click OK. Then change the vertical alignment to middle and change the horizontal alignment to center. Next, select column A, hold control. Also select column F, right click on the column header, column width, set the width to six, click OK. Select row one, right click, row height, Set the height to 30, click OK. Then with row one still selected, bold the font, then click the fill color button, select dark blue or a color of your choice, click the font color button, select white, increase the font size to 14, then change the horizontal alignment to left. Awesome. For the finishing touch, go to View and uncheck Grid Lines. That does it for the worksheet structure, so now we will make a copy of this worksheet. To do that, right click on the Worksheet tab, Move or Copy, check Create a Copy, click OK. Then rename one worksheet to Setup and rename the other worksheet to J-A-N. Great. Now let's focus on the setup worksheet first. Select cell B1 and type in setup. Then go to home, borders, line color, and select this light gray. Now this action might put Excel into draw borders mode like you see here. To exit this mode, go to borders, draw border. Awesome. At this point, select B3 through C3, bold the font, then click Borders, All Borders. Select B3, add a light gray fill color, and type in Year. Select C3 and type in the year that you want to use for your weight tracker. After that, select B3 through C3, right click, Copy, select cell B5, right click, and paste. Then change year to goal weight. And instead of the year, type in your goal weight. In this case, I'm just going to type in 200. Fantastic. Now select cell B7 and type in J A N. Then, use the fill handle to create a list of months like so. We are going to use this list in a later step, but before that, we need to create three range names that will also help us with the formulas later on. To create these range names, first select cell C3, then click here in this box, which is called the name box. Type in start year with no spaces, and press enter. This creates a range name that can be used to refer back to this specific cell. To create the second range name, select cell C5, click in the name box, type in goal weight, and press enter. Finally, select B7 through B18, click in the name box, Type in month list and press enter. 
You should now see three range names when you click the down arrow in the name box like so. To complete the worksheet, select rows 7 through 18, right click, and hide. Fantastic. That does it for the setup worksheet, so on to the January worksheet. Select cell B1 and type in weight tracker. Then select cells B3 through C3, bold the font, apply all borders. Select cell B3, add a light gray fill color, type in month, then select cell C3 and go to data, data validation. Under allow, select list, and for the source, enter equals month list, which is one of the range names that we created earlier. And then of course, click OK. You should now have a drop down list that you can use to select the month for this worksheet. And in this case, select JAN. Now select the range B5 through E36 and go to home and apply all borders. Select B5 through E5, bold the font, apply a light blue fill color, and then type in date, weight, change, and to go. This is going to be the table that you use to log your weight each day. Speaking of which, go ahead and type in a few pieces of sample data like so. You can change these later, but adding the sample data now is going to help us validate our formulas here in a little bit. And once you've added the data, select B6 through B36, add a light gray fill color, change the font color to dark blue, then click the down arrow here and select short date. After that, select D6 through E36. Add a light gray fill color and change the font color to dark blue. Then select C6 through E36. Click the down arrow here. Select more number formats. Select number. Set the decimal places to one and click OK. Awesome. Now let's add in the formulas. Start by selecting cell B6 and enter the following equals date function start year next argument match function dollar sign C dollar sign three next argument month list next argument zero close parentheses next argument one, close parentheses, and press enter. This formula uses the date function to calculate the first day of the chosen month and start year. The match function is used to return the month number based on the selected month. Now for the next formula, select cell B7 and enter the formula equals B6 plus one. This formula merely increments the day by one, and once you've written it, use the fill handle to copy the formula down to cell B36. Now select cell D6 and enter zero, then in cell D7, enter the following formula. Equals if function C7 equals zero, Next argument, quote, dash, quote. Next argument, C7 minus C6, close parentheses and press enter. This formula checks to see if a weight value has been entered. If not, we get a dash. Otherwise, we get the difference between the current weight and the previous weight. And of course, Go ahead and use the fill handle to copy this formula down to cell D36. Okie dokie, one more formula to go. 
select cell E6 and enter the following. Equals if function C6 equals zero. Next argument, quote, dash, quote. Next argument, ABS function C6 minus goal weight. Close parentheses, close parentheses, and press enter. This formula checks to see if a weight has been entered. If not, we get a dash. Otherwise, we get the difference between the current weight and the goal weight. The ABS function is used here so that we get a positive value back regardless of the result. You see, depending on your goals, you might be trying to lose weight or gain weight. But in both cases, this formula is going to tell you how much weight remains. It's just a little easier to grasp a positive number in this context rather than saying you have minus 35 pounds or kilograms to go. This way, we avoid confusion. That being said, go ahead and use the fill handle to copy the formula down to cell E36. All right, that does it for the formulas. So now let's add in some special formatting to the change column to make positive and negative values easier to recognize. To do this, select D6 through D36. Click the down arrow here and select more number formats. Click on custom and enter the following. Alt 30 and you have to use the nine digit number pad for this. Space, space, 0, 0.0, semicolon, alt 31, and again, you have to use the nine digit number pad for this, and then space, space, 0, 0.0, semicolon, dash, semicolon, at symbol, and that's it. Now, if you're trying to lose weight, then type in open bracket, red, close bracket at the very beginning like this. However, if you are trying to gain weight, type in open bracket, red, close bracket right after the first semicolon like this. It all depends on your goals. And once you have the code written like this, go ahead and click on OK. Your numbers should now look like this, but if you struggled to type this in or get the code to work right, I've added the code to the description of this video for you to easily copy and paste it into your spreadsheet. Either way, once you have it, the last step is to create the line chart. To begin, select cell H6 and enter the following formula equals C3 ampersand quote space dash space weight space change quote and press enter. This formula creates the title that we will use for the chart once we make it. Speaking of which, select cells B6 through C36 and go to insert line charts, 2D line with markers. Then select the chart title, click in the formula bar, enter equals, select cell H6 and press enter. Once you've done that, select the chart, go to format, align, snap to grid. This is going to make it easier to align the chart with the cells. So now go ahead and move and resize the chart to cover the range G5 through L16. Then click the chart, click the plus, and uncheck grid lines. Then select the vertical axis, increase the font size to 12, right click on the vertical axis, select format axis, and then in the panel on the right, under number, set the decimal places to zero. Now click on the horizontal axis and under labels, 
select none. You can then close the panel on the right, then click the chart, and under format, set the chart fill color to light gray, and set the chart outline color to a slightly darker light gray. Finally, select the title, bold the font, and change the font color to black. Fantastic! We are now done with the worksheet. All that's left is to create a copy for each other month. To do that, just right click on the worksheet tab, move or copy, move to end, check create a copy, and click OK. Then rename the new worksheet to FEB for February and change the month to FEB in cell C3 as well. Then select the rows that you don't need if it's a shorter month, right click and delete. You can then copy the January worksheet again and repeat this process until you have a worksheet for all 12 months. And that's about it for building a weight tracker in Microsoft Excel. I hope you had fun and learned something new, and be sure to leave a comment with any questions you might have, or just to say hello. Other than that, I will see you again in the next spreadsheet life video. Yeah.